Some of the work that we do is uh, related to security, uh, to computer security in particular. Um, there is a government agency called GCHQ in the UK, which stands for Government Communications Headquarters. So they're sort of super authority in the UK that looks after all things to do with security, including computer security. And they've come to us a little while ago with a really interesting question. Uh, basically, they said, mm, we're looking at a lot of computer systems, and uh, is there any way we can measure how secure they really are? And uh, how do we understand what our experts are saying? Data mining is all about crunching large volumes of data. But then you come to these points where suddenly there's all sorts of data there, but it relies on human expertise and it's not so clear anymore what exactly you're looking for. And here it's a, it's a classic example. So you get your experts to look at a computer system. And this is actually some real data. This is the unclassified version. I don't have to shoot you when you have to go. You're okay. This is an example where actually lots of experts from GCHQ have been asked to assess the security of a system. The details I can't reveal, but there was a particular system that was set up. There was different ways of attacking the system. And the experts were basically asked, okay, tell me this particular type of attack on a scale of one to 10, do you think it's easy or difficult? And this is the answers we got. And each dot is a particular expert. The colors just relates to what part of GCHQ they're working in. They might be in slightly different subgroups. And you can see some of the experts, they said, oh yeah, this is a really easy attack to do. They gave it rank number one. But some of the experts actually said, oh, it's kind of in the middle. And some experts said, no, no, this is really difficult. This is number 10. And this is typical for when you're asking experts. I mean, these are highly qualified people. And the same is true in medicine, and this is kind of where our work started with all of this, and why GCHQ came to us. We, we worked a lot with doctors, doctors assess patients, and why do you have to ask a second and a third opinion? It's because they don't always give you the same answer, do they? So the same here, you ask your different experts, and they can give you very, very different answers. It, it doesn't become a data mining problem anymore now, because, well, what, what are you going to do with this? Because take the average, but the average is probably completely wrong, because what's really happening here is one of two things. One, Either this expert who is sort of a bit of an outlier, he's untrained and he actually just needs a bit of training, or maybe he just become aware of a zero day attack, somebody nobody else knows yet and he really knows his stuff. Whereas these people here, they might work on this day to day and they're probably right in a general sense, but maybe they've missed this latest attack. So if you go for the average, you probably end up with the completely wrong answer. Because either it's trivial or there's something that's just happened recently and we need to find out. But you can't just take the average. When we were working with GCHQ, that's kind of what it looks like. It's a big donut, actually. So they're basically saying, look, lots of government agencies are coming to us and they say, we want, we, we want our, uh, our system to be assessed by your experts. How secure is it? Should we spend more on security? And, um, well, okay, so how many experts should we ask? Is there any, does it matter whether we ask internal or external experts? Does it matter whether we ask experts of different teams? And what do we do when we get five opinions? Do we just take the average? So through our studies and through our collection of data, we were able to come up with a number of findings which were quite interesting. One of the things that we looked at, for example, was whether experts which are internal to the organisation and experts which are external to the organisations give different answers. Maybe they had different training, maybe they have different years of experience. And one of the things we found was that actually the internal and the external experts as a whole, they give more or less the same answers. So that was good because there was some concern on GCHQ's part that they need to be very careful there who they select. But it turns out, no, it's a mixture is good. Another thing that we looked at was different groups of experts. Do they give different answers? It turns out that some groups, they're obviously very narrowly technically focused and they will always give you more or less the same answer. Whereas other groups, they seem to be broader and they give you a wider variety of answers. So while it's maybe a good idea to ask five experts, it's not a good idea to ask five experts from some group because it doesn't matter, you're just wasting your time, you're getting five times the same answer. So you might want to ask either five people from these other groups or five people from different groups. So what's an example of that? Is it just that perhaps they're specifically studying networks? And yeah, so somebody might, some of these groups, they might be really, really focused on firewalls. So they know everything about firewalls. So when, when you ask them about firewalls, all of them are going to say the same thing. But there's other groups, well, they've studied more broader things. Also, it can, it can just be to do with the dynamics of the group. Maybe there's a very strong leader in some groups, so everybody will give you the opinion of the leader. Whereas in other groups, it's a bit more free thinking. What we're really after is computer security and understanding how secure is the system. Ideally, what we want is a measure of security. And to, to obtain such a measure, this is a computer, a computer science issue. We get data, we get data by asking experts. There's also data by not asking experts. We have data by the system. I mean, look, for example, uh, 
this is kind of what the system looks like. Here's a network. This is how many hops there are. There's a firewall here. There's an encryption machine there. There's a content checker here. You've got all this information as well. So you've got all this information and you've got the expert opinions. Now, how do you put it all together to give you a number or something that tells you, okay, actually, this is how secure we are, or we should spend more money on this, or we, we don't need to? Is it possible to do that? I have a bicycle lock, and uh, it's rated, you know, as to how secure it is. Yes. I'm guessing that's based on how thick it is, how heavy duty the metal is, but things change in the computer. The problem is with this, the system might be this secure today, and then tomorrow something happens and a, patch, a new patch comes out or some update comes out and things change. So what you're actually going to get is something more dynamic here. So you have to ask the question again and again. But at least at this moment in time, when you ask your five experts, you're going to get a consistent answer, or at least you know how to get a consistent answer out of their opinions. One of the things that we found about this, which is very interesting, and here's a publication where you can read much more about this. Because these computer systems are very complicated things, many hops, many stages, many different ways of attacking them. This is where humans, we have a problem. We can't have all the information in our head all the time. So one of the things that we were interested in is how do experts actually form their opinion of this? And it turns out that what experts really do is they look at the whole system and they identify which one of the many steps is the most difficult step. They call it the most difficult hop. And once they've identified the most difficult hop, they then think very hard, okay, how difficult is this most difficult hop? For example, the encryption machine might be the most difficult hop, breaking the encryption. How difficult is that? And they give that a rating between 1 and 10. And their final rating for the whole overall system is 95% of the rating they gave for this most difficult hop. Which just shows you how we as humans, you know, do our data mining. Really simple. So that's, that's basically so that you, we, may as well, we may as well use that same technique, is that what? That's right. That's basically one way you can do it. I mean, if you're, if you're happy with a 95% answer, which you might be happy on most systems, then actually it's sufficient to ask your experts which one is the most difficult part and how difficult is this part. One thing that this image has that our last image of the flower didn't have is sharp changes in intensity. So this C has a sharp step down into the background and that is not something that JPEG handles very well at all. But statistics on its own is not enough and that's where computer programming is really good because it's more flexible than statistics.